First up, we have Christopher Stock from Inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Hey, Adrian, I was curious about, you know, just obviously your excitement of getting this thing going, but also what were some keys for you in the offseason improving your game? Um, obviously, you do so many things well, but for your for yourself, what were some things that you're working on or you want to get better at uh, for this year? Yeah, so my key was basically, you know, just getting a little bit better at catching, you know. Uh, I mean, obviously, I can improve in any game, but I think, you know, catching, I felt like I needed the most. And um, over the offseason, I had I, I was uh, able to work with Salvador Perez and um, um, Pete, Pete Griffo. He's the bench coach for the Royals as well, and they taught me a ton of things. And I uh, listened very, very closely to what they told me, and I'm going to take it to my game. And... Um, I was I was very fortunate to have them, thankfully, and, and it helped me a lot to to you know better up my catching back there. Was there something specific uh, that that Salvador really helped you with? Um, yeah, honestly, he it was more the mental side of it. You know, um, he was like, you know, catching's mental. You know, you catch 160 games up there. You know, here you catch maybe only 50ish around there. And um, you just got to come out to play every single time, every single day. You know, 100, 110 percent. Even though your body's not feeling it, but your mind's got to be 110% and ready to go. And I, I learned a lot from him. And also just just uh, communicating with the pitcher. So that's the most important thing. Uh, communication with the pitcher. If, if they don't like you, then they're not going to choose you to catch uh, them. And they're not going to be comfortable with you. So that's, that's huge um, when he told me that. Awesome. Next up, we have David Ferronis of the Sun Sentinel. David, go ahead. Hey, Doug, just wanted to get a, uh, an idea of the excitement level for players as you guys get started in earnest with practice ahead of the season and just how, uh, you know, obviously losing last season about a month into the year and then just uh, now everything coming full circle finally and, and getting back to it. Yeah, I mean, we're all super excited. Uh, you know, even I could say for myself, I'm super excited. I haven't played a game or like an actual game in about a year almost, you know, and I, I, would just, I just want to be out there and I'm, I'm – really happy where we're playing and I know they cut six games but you know I ain't worried about that I just you know thank God we're playing in in this crazy times and you know just go out there and have fun all right next up we have Matt Shodell of Kane Sport Matt go ahead yeah hey Adrian um so I, I assume you've been working with the pitchers at least a little bit catching them bullpens whatever it might be I was curious you know you got so many new faces and I want to ask particularly about this new guy, Ben Wanger. You know, I guess he might be a closer. Can you sort of talk about him a little bit? You know, maybe the, the type of pitches he throws, if you think he can be a dominant uh, pitcher at this level. Yeah, you know, honestly, I think, you know, Ben, I'm sure he's a, a candidate for our, our closing job. And you know, he does both. He hits, too. He's a good hitter and a, a good pitcher. He has he has a pretty a really good fastball and a really good curveball. Or it's like a slurve, more or less. I'll text you when and, it's last question. And... um. All right, and um, he also he's he's been working on a changeup with uh, with um, JD, and it's actually been a lot better than when he came in. So that, that three pitch pitch mix is going to be good, and he's also a veteran, so he, he's he's played about maybe five years of college baseball already. He kind of knows, you know, how to you know work it. So hopefully, yeah, he he comes big for us. All right, the last question for you comes from Wyatt Kopelman. Wyatt, go ahead. Hey, Adrian, obviously the team uh, opens the season at the new Florida ballpark up in Gainesville. Just how would you describe the team's mentality going into the season and opening against the Gators after last season's close? Well, yeah, our mentality is to definitely, you know, sweep them. You know, obviously they swept us here last year and um, that was the worst feeling ever. It, you know, I know the freshmen weren't here. They, they don't know, but, you know, the people that were here, it was a terrible feeling just going back inside the locker room and, you know, I just I just want to reverse that, and hopefully we can do that this year. Fetterman, first up, we have Christopher Stock of Inside the U. Chris, go ahead. And I was kind of curious, just obviously making this transition um, into being a starter. Obviously, it was something you did well in in high school. Um, what are some things that you've had to either work on or to to make sure you're uh, just to make this transition? Um, you know, I, I gained a little bit of weight last season, trying to throw a little harder. Uh, this season, had to cut back a little bit. Um, get a little leaner. Um, it's just a throwing program, making sure I'm long tossing and getting my arm ready to throw more pitches. Um, you know, I've, I've done it recently. I did it in summer ball. Um, everything's going well and I'm excited. And just to follow up, 
where did you play summer ball? And then um, your weight change, where did you go? Uh, where were you from? And then where you're at now? Um, I played for the Chatham Anglers in the Cape Cod. Um, last season, I was around 215 pounds from 200. Um, I went down to about 190 earlier this fall and then um, trying to get right back up to around 200 right before season. All right, great. We're going to go to David Fronas of the Sun Sentinel. David, go ahead. Hey, Daniel. What about also now uh, with the guys that you, uh, you, the team lost in the rotation, now you being elevated to sort of the, this ace, the, the most experienced uh, starter here uh, that's returning and, uh, and, and just the, the mental side of now um, handling that role? Um, you know, I've, I've pitched in big games. You know, I've, I have some experience. Um, we got a lot of new guys with a lot of talent, and um, I'm excited to, you know, see everybody step up. Um, we're going to need every single guy that we have. Um, you know, it's not on one guy. It's not on two guys. You're going to need, you know, 18 pitchers to really step up this season. And um, I'm excited for everybody. Awesome. We're going to go to Wyatt Kobelman. Wyatt, go ahead. Hey, Daniel. I asked Adrian the same question, but the team obviously opens up at Florida Ballpark against the Gators. Um, just how would you describe the team's mentality going into the series after last year's close loss? Uh, we're, we're excited. I mean, it's still a ways away. Um, we're worried about, you know, we have an inner squad today. Um, but obviously, you know, we're, we're all excited. We're all amped up. Um, but it's still a ways away. All right, we're going to go back to Chris Stock. Chris, go ahead. I was curious about, um, you know, just you've been in the bullpen, but have you been eyeing, you know, trying to get back into to being a starter? And then also, uh, when are you scheduled to throw in the inner squad? And, and I assume it's three innings. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I've always wanted to be a starter. I've always felt comfortable as a starter. Um, but what this team needed in the past was a, was a strong reliever. And, and I felt like that, you know, I could step up and, and be that guy. Um, you know, with, with this year's team, you're losing all three starters from last year. Um, you know, I've worked and, and tried to earn a spot in that rotation. Um, I throw today, I throw three innings. So that'll be this afternoon. All right, Fed, we got two more. We're going to go back to David Ferronas of the Sun Sentinel. David, go ahead. Hey, Fed, I uh, also wanted to ask about your impression of uh, the other guys, any uh, up-and-coming pitchers that you feel have has uh, impressed you uh, in, in this time off and uh, who you think can make some great strides this season. Um, I think everybody's got a uh, huge potential. We've got a great, great, great class of young arms. Um, I'd say uh, Alejandro Rosario's got some pretty electric stuff. Same thing with Victor Medeiros. I mean, everybody, there's just up and down. You know, we just got to see what guys got when it comes to game time. All right, our last question for you comes from Susan Miller-Degnan of the Miami Herald. Susan, go ahead. Hey, Daniel. Um, I, I know you were asked about Florida, but, um, st you know, it's just – and you usually, you guys play Florida early in the season, you know, usually, but not to start off. I, I just, what's it, what, how does it make things different starting off? I mean, it's such a nemesis, you know, it's such a big rivalry. Starting off with them, how does it, I don't know, just affect how you're feeling now, how you prepare, what you look forward to? You know, this is why I think a lot of guys come here. We want a chance to play in Omaha. We want to play the best of the best. Um, they are, we have had a rivalry. We've never opened up on the road since I've been here. So I think that's going to be pretty cool for us. Um, it doesn't matter when we play them. We know we're going to get to play them. And uh, I know the guys are excited. Um, it is what it is. I mean, last year's last year. I don't think anybody in here in this locker room is worried about that. Um, we know that February 19th, uh, we're going to go out there and, and try to win a ball game. Gotcha. And then the other thing is just the, the COVID factor. Uh, you know, I talked to Gino and some other guys. I mean, just, uh, you know, how is life different now as far as baseball goes? Gino said there's some differences, you know. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, you know, we just got in the locker room a couple weeks ago. Um, we're not eating in the locker room. We're taking every precaution that we can so that everybody can play. Um, it's, it's tough, you know, getting to know guys, getting guys to be a lot closer, you know, especially with all the new faces. But, you know, you got to do it. Everybody's got to do it around the country. You know, we all want to make the sacrifices. We want to play. And if you get it, you got to sit out. So I don't think anybody in here would rather sit in the locker room and get COVID. And at the end of the day, we're all staying healthy. So, you know, it's a, it's a blessing to be here. Hey, Gates. First up, we have Christopher Stock from Inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Hey, JP. I was kind of curious about the, the amount of competition that there will be for spots in the, the batting order, the lineup. I know you guys return guys, but certainly – there's some spots available 
um, just kind of your, your approach to that at, at the plate and maybe what you see with the competition for at bats. I mean, I personally think that we all have a chance of being in the lineup. We all we all compete. We're competing every day. Even if you're not like a spot that's getting picked up, your spot can be taken. Um, it's no guarantees. It, that's just how baseball is. Because, um, you know, with everything with COVID and everything, one guy could go down. You got to be ready when you get your opportunity. Next up, we have David Ferronis of the Sun Sentinel. David, go ahead. Hey, I just want to get the idea of the, the mood around the team as you guys uh, get going uh, for practice, especially after having, uh, you know, everything stripped away last season, about a month into the year, just to to go a full calendar year around and now finally get back to it. Oh, uh, I mean, we're just out here trying to get better every day. Um, we're pushing each other. We're doing after work. We're doing early work. We're just trying to get after it to be the best team we can be. Uh, next up, we have Austin Pert. Austin, go ahead. Absolutely. Um, obviously, last year you uh, you did spend some time, uh, you know, in that that reliever role slash uh, the utility. Uh, what kind of role do you expect to play in this pitching rotation? And what's the pitching rotation look like for uh, this spring? Uh, we don't really know yet. We don't have any definites. Um, I definitely see myself in the bullpen starting the season and being the utility guy I needed. Um, but definitely all of us are just going to serve the purpose that they call on us to do. All right. We're going to go back to Christopher Stock from inside the U. Stock, go ahead. Yeah, JP, I was curious about the two-way players like yourself. Ben's a guy that, that's hit the college level. I think there's this Mike might be a guy as well. Can you speak on, on the group of you guys that, that can do that, that are looking to do that, fill roles? Uh, and it's obviously unique, you know, before yourself, it had been a while since there have been two-way productive players. Uh, can you talk about who, who's all doing that and what's that like having a group of you guys? Uh, we just added another one, which is CJ Kafis. He just started becoming a pitcher as well. Um, there's We haven't any word on, like, who's two-way and who's not two-way and, like, who's doing what, like, who's hitting, who's just pitching, nothing like that. They're just letting us go out there and play and just see what we can do. All right, JP, we're going to go to Susan Miller-Degnan of the Miami Herald. Susan, go ahead. Hey, JP. Um, what was it like last last season? You know, you you guys were doing so great, and then boom, all of a sudden, right? One day it ended. What was what was that experience like for you? Uh, personally, I was one of the first guys, you know, um, to, you know, get that whole, like, reality check of, like, the whole COVID and everything. Um, you know, it's just different, just that bus ride back. It just felt surreal. You know, we're about to go play up in Virginia Tech and get ready to go play a series. And just out of nowhere, midweek game, we're, still, we're going back home and not playing ever again until next year. And, and how, I mean, how have things changed since then? I was, you know, asking Gino about it as far as um, protocols and what you're going to have to do, you know, now during practice in the locker room, uh, you know, in the dugout. How are things different now because of COVID? Well, we used to all be in the same dugout. And, you know, it's just weird having two separate dugouts, um, not being able to, like, do, like, the same, like, you know, handshakes, um, you know, just hanging out with your guys. They used to always hang out with the dugout, um, you know, like, slapping hands, you know, all that stuff. You can't do that anymore. So it's definitely a lot different. Um, but I don't think that's going to affect us much when it comes to the season. I think we, we all know what's going to be needed to be able to play and to continue to play. Uh, 